Hello, and welcome to Linux Action News, episode 295, recorded on May 31st, 2023. I'm Chris. And I'm Wes. Hello, Wes. Let's do the news. This week, we started seeing multiple reports of metadata corruption issues on the XFS file system when using Linux 6.3. The cause has been traced to a recently backported patch. This is one of the tricky things about backporting to older Linux kernels. And so we got our first insights on this when a bug was filed over on Red Hat's Bugzilla that indicates that Linux 6.3.3 specifically has a metadata corruption issue with XFS file systems when upgrading. And others have reported constant crashing when on Linux 6.33. And even a Debian user chimed in having similar XFS-related issues with that version of the Linux kernel. Well, gosh, thank goodness for early testers, huh? Users running 6.4 and earlier versions of 6.3 did not have any of these problems, so that at least quickly narrowed things down. Yeah, that's good. And within a few days, XFS developer Dave Chinner at Red Hat seems to have tracked it down, and then he quickly created a patch for Fedora users to start testing immediately. Hey, those early testers again. And, well, that testing showed the issue was solved for the few users who had reported it. The total fix actually ended up being just a one-line patch, and it's been submitted upstream in Linux 6.3.5, along with the usual assortment of other bug fixes. The internet is still rolling around the discovery that we covered last week. Microsoft has a new Linux. You can think of it as like their rel to their fedora, if you will. Azure Linux which they say has a, quote, very opinionated Azure focus, is based on CBL Mariner. And as a Microsoft staffer put it, Azure Linux is, quote, the commercially supported offering for CBL Mariner Linux. The new insight this week is why Microsoft built their RPM-based distro from scratch instead of just basing it on Fedora. An attendee at Build asked a member of the Azure team just that question, and their answer gives us some insight. Quote, Azure Linux is its own distribution. We didn't fork Fedora or anything like that. We have borrowed code from them. It's an RPM-based distro. Yeah, then they went on to say, quote, the reason we chose not to fork a different distro, Microsoft kind of has a history with Linux. I think the Balmer quote from 2001, but a lot of that sentiment, it still lingers today. Part of the reason we did not choose to start with a distribution and then fork it for our needs is we didn't want to be seen as doing the embrace and extend thing again. We didn't want to wake any of that up. We figured build it from scratch and we can tailor it to our needs. We're scratching an itch we had and offering the solution back to the community. That community consists of Azure customers, of course, But Microsoft says they have had a few outside contributors, and the company expressed the hope that more would do so. Yeah, maybe more will contribute. We shall see. Uh, I have a sense that if, you know, crazy, but one day if they announced Azure Linux was going to be the foundation for some new Linux-based desktop project, then they'd probably get quite a few contributions. The Fedora KDE Special Interest Group is making plans for a bold transition in Plasma 6. Wayland only. The team plans to drop X11 support from the Plasma spin of Fedora once Plasma 6 ships, and they've got some reasons for it, including that Xorg server is deprecated since RHEL 9 and will be dropped in some future major RHEL release. Also, graphics fallback modes are now Wayland-friendly with simple DRM enabled in Fedora 36. And NVIDIA drivers support GBM for Wayland now, which means Wayland is fully supported on current NVIDIA drivers. Yeah, even this week we saw an update to the NVIDIA beta driver that adds even more significant Wayland support. Uh, The KDE SIG group over there at Fedora also adds that they expect this to drastically reduce their support burden, and allow them to focus on quality for the KDE Plasma stack and continue a feature-forward nature. I mean, those all sound like things you would expect from a Fedora spin of a Plasma desktop. It does mean, though, that Plasma 6 won't be getting backported to any of the current Fedora releases. So if you're hoping to stay on an older version to get the newer Plasma, that's not happening this time. But don't worry. 
Your favorite X11 apps are still going to work just fine, even in a Wayland only environment, because X Wayland will be there and it is fully maintained. Canonical is reminding us all this week that Ubuntu 1804 LTS, that old bionic beaver, has reached the end of its standard five year maintenance period as of today, May 31st, 2023. Consequently, unless you hold an Ubuntu Pro subscription, which extends support from five years to ten, updates for Ubuntu 1804 LTS servers will cease to be available. So long, old buddy. Linode.com slash LAN. Go there to get $100 in 60-day credit, and it's a great way to support the show while you check out the exciting news. What news, you ask? Well, Linode is now powered of Akamai. All the developer-friendly tools like their awesome, easy-to-use cloud manager, their well-documented API with tons of libraries ready to go, and the CLI you can pop in a terminal and manage your rig all day long. Yes, it's still there. And it's still going to work just the way you expect it, I suppose. <laughs> you can build, deploy, and scale in the cloud like never before because now Linode is combined with Akamai's power and global reach. And they're expanding services to offer more cloud computing resources and tooling while still giving you that classic and loved, reliable, affordable, and scalable solutions for yourself or a business of any size. And with that Akamai global network of offerings, data centers are expanding worldwide. They're investing big into the infrastructure and giving you access to even more resources to grow your site, grow your business, and serve your customers. It's how we do it, and we love it. Wouldn't go anywhere else. So why wait? Experience the power of Linode, now Akamai. Go to linode.com slash L A N today to learn how Linode, now Akamai, can help scale your applications from the cloud all the way to the edge. Linode.com slash LAN. And thank you to Collide. Collide.com slash LAN. Collide can help Okta users achieve 100% fleet compliance. If a device isn't compliant, the user can't log into your cloud applications until they fix the problem. The moment Collide's agent does detect a problem, well, it alerts the user and gives them instructions to fix it. If they don't fix that problem within a set time, they're blocked. It's that simple. Collide's solution also ensures device compliance as part of authentication, which reduces support tickets and IT frustration while ensuring 100% compliance. Learn more or book a demo at collide.com slash LAN. It's been a mixed bag of a year for the Internet Archive, and this week they took to their blog with a few humble requests. They say they don't mind site scraping and even large bulk usage, but they are asking for folks to implement this with some limits. Yeah, this all happened after some recent outages. Brewster Kale wrote, quote, Tens of thousands of requests per second for our public domain OCR files were launched from 64 virtual hosts on Amazon's AWS. Even by web standards, tens of thousands of requests per second is a lot. This activity brought archive.org down for all users for about an hour. That is unfortunate. Um, I can imagine the scramble. They go on to write what must have just been a very frustrating situation, saying, quote, we are thankful to our engineers who could scramble on a Sunday afternoon on a holiday weekend to work on this. We got the service back up by blocking those IP addresses, but another 64 addresses started the same type of activity a couple of hours later. We figured out how to block this new set, but again, with about an hour outage. Yeah, that's clearly not sustainable, and honestly, just seems rude. Brewster says they are happy to share and serve that content in bulk, but users should start slowly and ramp up. They also point out that for large projects, you can just contact them, writing, if you find yourself blocked, please don't just start again. Reach out. Please use the Internet Archive, but don't bring us down in the process. Yeah, really, don't, don't bring them down. Uh, we wanted to share this story with you this week because I think both Wes and I feel like the Internet Archive, it is a unique project. It's a special thing, and it can sometimes be forgotten. It can sometimes get taken advantage of, like we're seeing here. And I think I also feel some overlap with the open source community and the Internet Archive. S similar kind of goals in some areas, philosophies and morals and priorities. So 
I think we're going to keep an eye on how things are doing over there. And of course, we'll keep an eye on the rest of Linux and the world of open source. So, so don't miss any episodes. Go to linuxactionnews.com slash subscribe for all the ways to get new episodes. And linuxactionnews.com slash contact for ways to keep in touch. If we missed a story this week, let us know. You can always boost in with a new podcast app and tell us what you'd like us to cover. We'll be back next week with our take on the latest Linux and open source news. Thanks for joining us. That's all the news for this week. <laughs>